Today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in an older game called Winner's Circle. This is a horse racing game, and I'm always intrigued when racing games hit the table, um, especially when you are not controlling one specific uh, entity that is racing. So in this game, uh, this would be a little different if you were a horse and you were racing against the other horses. So Campbell Up was the first game that I, that I played, first racing game where you are not controlling a specific camel. Uh, the, the camel movement is uh, completely out of player's control, really. You just have a, you can influence their movement a little bit, um, but barely. Most of the time, you're just betting on these horses and kind of cheering them on with the other, play, with the other players. But you do have agency over that. Um, but Winner's Circle has a kind of a few combinations of mechanisms that allow for this, this idea where you are not a horse, you are, uh, you're betting on these horses and hoping your horse or horses win. Um, the main, the core mechanism that I think that makes this really interesting is that at the beginning of every round, there, there are, I think there are six horses, maybe seven, all different colors. Um, and they have different places on the board where you can see, okay, this is, this is the white horse's ability this round. And those abilities come out randomly. And what the abilities represent are, um, there, show, there are four different categories and they show when that category is activated, how far that horse will move. And this is a really interesting part of the game because the abilities, the ability structure that, structures that come out are very, very different. Like one, there are four categories. So in category one, you might have a horse that moves zero spaces. Category two, it might move five spaces. Category three, it might move 17 spaces. And then category four, it might move seven spaces. And all the horses are, are like this. Some have like an extreme category, like that 17, maybe even more extreme. Others are very balanced. Um, and at the beginning, so you lay out all these abilities, and at the beginning of each of the three rounds, you bet on uh, a few horses, and you place those bets face down. One of your bets is a, bl is a bluff bet. It's a, it, like you want that horse to lose. Um, other bets are uh, kind of tentative bets, and then one strong bet, and they're all face down. And uh, so this combination right here um, creates some really interesting choices because you don't know what's on the other side of the other token. So you might be rooting for a horse together with another player, or you might not. You might be rooting against them. And as the game evolves, um, you might have someone who's in the lead in terms of the money they've accumulated that round because you're ended up getting money each round. And so you might try to... Uh, you don't want to help them, basically. You want to win, you want to do well, but not if they are doing well, too. The other part, so to explain a little bit how this mechanism works, on your turn, you roll a die. And on that die, you're rolling one of those four categories. They're, they're icons, I think there's like a little cap, there's a saddle, things like that. They don't mean anything other than they activate those four categories on the horses. So you roll the die, and one of those categories is activated. Your choice, though, is which horse is activated. And this is, even though it's a random element, um, this is input randomness because you you have the you have the random element and then you decide where you want it to go. Um, so this is interesting because say I bet highly on that horse that had 17 movement um, and say I roll that 17 movement, that's almost an easy choice. I would have that horse move 17 times, 17 spaces. But say I didn't roll that, say I move, rolled one of the lower um, increments on that horse, um, but I see one of the horses that I'm betting against or that I don't want to win, that the icon that I rolled corresponds with their category where they don't move, they only move two spaces. So I might use my turn, my icon, to move a horse that I don't care about, simply because each horse only moves once per, not round, I guess, not, uh, but uh, yeah, round, we'll call it rounds. You, the game... The game's true rounds are like one lap around the track, laps, we'll call those laps. Each round, every player's rolling the dice until all the horses have moved once. So I might choose to activate that horse that I don't want to do well to move a little bit and not move very far um, because I know that'll that's their movement. They're done for the round and then maybe I'm hoping that another player will go ahead and move uh, my horse that 17 spaces or, or nine spaces or whatever the, the higher categories are. So that's that's a really interesting element of the game that you are you are not the horse, but you are you are in control over how the different horses move, whether or not you want them to move well. And sometimes you can you can collaborate with the other players. You might realize that the next player after you also wants this horse to do well. So you might say, okay, you know, I'm I'm not going to choose this horse, but you maybe you take care of it. Um, 
and sometimes you might get stuck in a spot where if, if like you're the last person to roll, you have no control there. You're kind of stuck there. You just have to roll if, and find out what happens on that horse. So you can kind of game the system a little bit. And you might try to stick someone with a horse that you don't want to do well or you do want to do well, um, knowing that they don't have control to choose uh, which horse moves. A lot of interesting decisions with this mechanism. I know this is, isn't really a specific mechanism, but I love the idea, this, this combination of the dice with the horses that have different categories, and that's how you control the horse movement, um, but that you don't have full agency because then you just always move your horse the best number of times. That wouldn't be interesting. So I, I really, really like, I'm, I'm just fascinated by these racing games where you are not the horse and you're, you're just betting on the horses and, and how that works. And this is a very simple streamlined mechanism. It works really, really well. Um, I also had a lot of fun with the game, if you can't tell. Uh, so I, if you have other racing games where you are not the thing that's racing, you're betting on the race, I'd love to hear about uh, the mechanisms of how that, those systems work in the comments. Thanks.